हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू यू जी सी ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम स्वाति कटियार सीनियर रिसर्च फेलो बिरला इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंटिफिक रिसर्च जयपुर गोइंग टू टेल यू समथिंग अबाउट द हाइपर स्पेक्ट्रल रिमोट सेंसिंग विल विल स्टार्ट विद द आउटलाइन स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द हाइपर स्पेक्ट्रल रिमोट सेंसिंग डेटा इट सेज हाइपर स्पेक्ट्रल रिमोट सेंसिंग एंड द एटमोसफियर इंक्लिनेश इंफॉर्मेशन एक्सट्रेक्शन फ्रॉम द ऑप्टिकल इमेज डेटा elements of the hyperspectral sensing hyperspectral remote sensing application in agriculture environment flood detection wetland mapping snow and glacier studies now we will start with the introduction of the hyperspectral data imaging spectroscopy is of growing interest as a new approach to earth remote sensing with the advent of the hyperspectral remote sensor both airborne and space borne along with the high storage capacity of the fast computing system and the advanced software to store and process the hyperspectral data it is now possible to detect and quantify earth resource material the original definition of the imaging spectroscopy proposed by the author and others was given as the acquisition of images in hundreds of contiguous registered spectral bands such that for each pixel a radian spectrum can be derived hyperspectral sensor or the imaging spectrometers collect unique data that are both a set of spatially contiguous spectra and spectrally and spectrally contiguous images as shown in the figure number 1 one of the earliest applications of hyperspectral remote sensing identified was geological mapping and its commercial role in mineral exploration figure number 1 shows the difference between the hyperspectral and the multispectral imagery One of the most important thrust of remote sensing technology is that the study of the monitoring of earth vegetation the em radiation when incident over the surface either um, get reflected absorbed re-radiated or transmitted through the material depending upon the nature of the object and the wavelength of the incident radiation which thus forms the signature of that object when vegetation is observed imaged from the space the integrated effect of the plant as a whole is recorded this include leaves stems branches flowers etc as well as the background which is in many cases is the soil nonetheless the major contribution is the is from the leaves which only form the higher surface area in the comparison to the other parts of the plants with varying shape sizes and internal characteristic of the leaves the spectral characteristic of the plants also change In earth observation over more than a decade efforts have been made to investigate the applicability of the multispectral data and of improved to geometric resolution of optical sensor down to 1 meter there is a need to have accurate uh, quantitative information of land surface parameter to understand the biogeophysical processes in terrestrial ecosystem this calls for the quantification of many parameter as well as inventory of a very different kind based upon the spectral responses in various wavelength regions in this context hyperspectral and ultra spectral remote sensing data has a crucial role to play the comparison between the hyperspectral and multispectral techniques is given in the table number 1 The first successfully launched civilian hyperspectral satellite sensor was NASA's Hyperion on EO1 has been in orbit since 2000. A year later, the CRIS onboard ESS project uh, platform was launched. Both system are still operating today providing imagery in the very near infrared region and the short wave infrared region. with the current launches of isro's very near infrared hyperspectral imager hisai on both the uh, indian microsatellites one and the chinese vnir mjia satellite sensor in the 2008 new opportunities will arise for the use of the hyperspectral data in various application areas due to larger ground sampling distance combined with the larger swath width of the sensors with the availability of the nv the development of application increased significantly making imaging spectroscopy as important tool in areas such as climate change resource management and environmental mon monitoring and assessment as for example shown in the everest workshop additional hyperspectral image analysis system have emerged such as the hyperspectral packages in ardas imagine and the pci geomatica 
द हाइपर स्पेक्ट्रल एब्जॉर्बशन फीचर्स एंड इंडाइसिस आर गिवन इन द टेबल नंबर टू द टेबल नंबर टू द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ इंडाइसिस विच वी कैन कैलकुलेट यूजिंग द हाइपर स्पेक्ट्रल डेटा नाउ वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द वेरियस टाइप ऑफ हाइपर स्पेक्ट्रल सेंसर द वेरी फर्स्ट इज द एयर बॉन एग्जाम्पल्स इंक्लूड कासी टेक्नोलॉजी हाई मैप एवरेस हाई डाइस डाइस and aims which is a indian technology space born uh, hyperspectral sensor include Mo modis meris hyperion and cris whereas the ground based include spectro radiometer now we'll discuss about the information extraction from the optical image data in a hyperspectral remote sensing the ability to derive information from a spectral data is the key to any successful collection the vast amount of spectral data must be culled to define the spectral signature of interest of the material under consideration in a spectral terms the pure spectral signature of a feature is called an n member one uh, method of collecting pure n member is from the laboratory spectroradiometer that is focused on a single surface or a material these signature are then used in the spectral sensor and detection algorithm are used to define and refine the spectral scene collected so a material of a so a material with similar characteristic can be defined however when the material of interest is now not available for an laboratory measurement it must be defined within the spectral scene collected data uh, can be collected at a pixel level as well as the object level as shown in the figure number 3 even though current remote sensor and the data collection system often create a extremely large data set that are difficult to work with the information contained in these data sets can be valuable as a result software has been developed to aid with the visualization and classification one option of the image classification process is a feature extraction this option reduces the spectral and the spatial characteristic with the spectral transformation of the special filter so that the sets can be easily processed and explored feature extraction can also be accomplished by selecting a subset of band based on the characteristic of certain items of interest one method for isolating spectral feature is called spectral mixture analysis sma the sma is a structured approach that addresses the mixed pixel problem and other factor that contribute to the image quality such as calibration and light condition the sma equation for each band is given below which explain rb is the spectral radiance at b fem is the fraction coefficient at each n member rm and their weight factor at the band b while eb is the error uh, of any other sources or a radiance in a band b each n member is selected based on its distinct material and its contribution to the overall spectral scene this method works best when the spectral diversity and the content of the scene are not complex and the spectral feature of interest are very minor in the scene other methods include the first difference partial least square that is called pls regression which uses a singular value decomposition of the entire spectrum within the scene and the hierarchical foreground background analysis hfba which divide the spectral scene of the two groups foreground and background and that contain the spectral signature of the feature of interest now we'll discuss about the various elements of the hyperspectral remote sensing the important element of hyperspectral remote sensing include the very first material spectroscopy b radiative transfer c imaging spectroscopy and d hyperspectral data processing we'll start with the very first that is the material spectroscopy material spectroscopy talks about the interaction of the electromagnetic radiation with matter particularly with respect to the wavelength dependence of observation observable material feature and provides the physical basis of hyperspectral sensing in terms of the direct relationship between observable material spectral feature and the inherent compositional characteristic a spectroscopy relates to the electromagnetic interaction at the atomic and the molecular level and behave strictly like quantum mechanics such behavior provides great insight into the origin of the observable a spectral feature that are the foundation for the information extracted from a hyperspectral data the second is the radiative transfer radiative transfer is the science of propagation of electromagnetic radiation from the various sources to a sensor including interaction with the objects and their environment as well as the atmosphere 
Radiative transfer is another critical factor that can be carefully understood because it provides the physical relationship between the measured spectrum and typically in the form of spectral radiance measurement at the sensor location to the apparent material characteristic such as its reflectance distribution. Because of the intervening atmosphere, the illumination activity includes two components, the direct solar illumination reduced by the atmospheric attenuation and an indirect component due to energy scattered by the atmosphere constituent such as aerosols, clouds and surrounding objects. Under some approximation, it is sufficient to describe the diffuse downwelling illumination in terms of its surface irradiance integrated over the hemisphere above the surface. Where we define LD as the indirect spectral radiance and the quantity that maintains the angular dependence of propagating radiation and ED lambda as the integrated spectral irradiance. This diffuse illumination can be influenced by light scattered either by directly or indirectly from the adjacent sources in the scene. Now we will discuss about the imaging spectroscopy. Imaging spectroscopy refers to the art and science and designing, fabrication, evaluating and applying instrumentation capable of simultaneously capturing spatial and spectral attributes of a scene with enough feasibility to preserve the fundamental spectral features that provide for the object detection, classification, identification and characterization. A variety of optical techniques can be employed to develop a sensor capable of capturing hyperspectral imagery including dispersive prism or grating spectroradiometer. Michelson Fourier transform spectroradiometer, spatial Fourier transform spectroradiometer scanning, Fabry Perot uh, acoustic optic turnable filter, and the dielectric filter. The figure 4 shows the light entering the grating spectroradiometer from a remote location is first focused by an imaging lens assembly to form an image on the slit. Plane. The slit is an opaque surface that blocks all the light except for a rectangular area one pixel high in the dimension shown and the many pixel wide in the uh, orthogonal direction. This surface is re-emerged by the 3 spectroradiometer mirror onto the 2D detector array so that the slit height nominally matches the detector element size and the slit width matches the detector array width. If there are no other elements, the 2D detector array simply produces a line image of the portion, portion of the scene that passes through the slit. However, the spectroradiometer also includes a periodic blazed grating on the surface of the middle mirror of the imaging optics that disperses light across the detector array dimension shown. Thus, the rearrangement forms an optical spectrum for each spatial location in the entrance slit across the dimension of the array as shown in the figure 4. Now we will discuss about the hyperspectral data processing. After the hyperspectral data have been calibrated, the question becomes how to extract and utilize the information content within the data. Two general approaches are taken towards the processing. The very first is the physical modeling and the statistical signal processing. The typically methods employ a line a linger mixing model for the radiance spectra and a sophisticated radiation transport code such as MODTRAN to capture the atmospheric trans, uh, transmission, radiation and scattering precision. These methods are often focused beyond the detection and the classification of material to a more quantitative estimation of the constituent material abundance and the physical properties. Now we will discuss about the orbital dynamics. Orbit types are the low earth orbit which we call LEO, the medium orbit and a geostationary orbit. And the last is highly elliptical orbit. Now we will discuss about the LEO. LEO satellites are typically placed at altitude of 500 km or higher. LEO offers the advantage of short delays but the disadvantage that the orbit of the satellite does not match the rotation of the earth. Thus, from an observer's point of view on the earth and LEO satellite appears to move across the sky which means a ground station must have an antenna that can rotate to track the satellite as it is shown in the figure number 5.
Now we will discuss satellite ground trace polar orbit. Due to earth rotation of, uh, due to rotation of the earth, it is possible to combine the advantage of the low altitude orbit with the global coverage using non-polar orbiting satellite which have an orbital planes crossing the poles as shown in the figure number 6. These satellite termed polar orbiting environmental satellite are launched into orbit at high inclination to earth rotation such that they passes across the high altitude near the poles. Most polar orbiting satellites are circular to slightly elliptical at a distance ranging from 700 to 1700 kilometers from the geoid at different altitudes. They travel at different spreads. High inclination means that the sub-satellite point moves north or south along the surface projection of the Earth's axis. If the orbit is designed correctly, the sub-satellite point can be largely in the day side of the planet during the entire orbit. Such an orbit is termed as sun synchronous and more details on that are given below. Now we will discuss something about the geostationary orbit. Geostationary orbit of 36,000 km from the Earth equator are best known for many satellites used for various forms of telecommunication including television. Signals from these satellites can be sent all the way around the world. Telecommunication needs to see their satellite all the time and hence it must remain stationary in the same position relatively to the Earth's surface. A stationary satellite provides the advantage for remote sensing that it always views the entire Earth the same prospects which means that it can record the same images at a brief intervals. This arrangement is particularly useful for the observation of weather condition as shown in the figure number 6. One disadvantage of geostationary Stationary satellite orbits in the great distance to the earth which reduces the achievable spatial resolution. Now we will discuss about the hyperspectral remote sensing sensors. Various airborne and spaceborne sensors developed by the national and some international agencies are as follows in the table number 3. Now we will discuss the advent of the hyperspectral remote sensing in the global scenario. The term hyperspectral imaging was first coined by Giotz in a paper discussing the early results of the techniques of imaging spectroscopy. Hyperspectral imaging has enabled application in a wide variety of earth studies. The prime motivation for development of imaging spectroscopy was mineralogical mapping of a surface soils and outcrops. The reflectance spectra of minerals are rich in electronic as well as the overtone and combination vibrational feature that characterizes surface that are relatively vegetative, vegetation free. Only approximately 30% of the land surface is relatively devoid of vegetation and the remaining 70% is covered by the vegetation to the extent that the Substrate is rendered inaccessible to remote sensing identification. However, the vegetation cover, its type, health, vigor and expression of environmental condition include the substrate are the subject of many ongoing studies. Studies of the coastal zone are better served by the hyperspectral imaging which makes it possible to unmix the bottom and the several in-column constituents. Hyperspectral imaging is equally applicable to the solid water phase which makes it possible to study the properties of ice and snow, in particular grains, size. Environmental studies using the hyperspectral imaging are yielding results that would be impossible to obtain or on would be uh, pro prohibitive in a cost or time spent with standard techniques. One example that has been documented to have saved millions of dollars in the cleanup of the Landwill CO Superfund site in which Everest images combined with the field spectral measurements identified the waste piles which the greatest potential for leaching heavy metals into streams and groundwater. Abestive form minerals have also been identified in situ with the Everest data. Maps of the expensive soils important in construction engineering can also be identified in the Everest data. Now we'll discuss about the hyperspectral remote sensing in the Indian scenario and its current status. 
Indian researchers are actively engaged in making use of the potential of hyperspectral data since the late 1990s and early 2000s in various fields of applications such as agriculture, precision farming, pest and disease forestry, coastal application and geological and mineralogical exploration and spectral library related activities. Land application include vegetation studies, plant st stress productivity, leaf water content and canopy and uh, soil science, identification and mapping and hydrology and the solid waste management studies, lake, river and ocean application includes biochemical studies and sediment mapping and bathymetry studies, atmospheric application include paramount parameter measurement, water vapor, uh, ozone and aerosols and cloud characteristic, optical thickness, cirrus detection, particulate size, all those work carried out in the collaboration with various state and national agencies relevant to respective fields and the study uh, sites also were spread over various parts over the India. Few studies also been carried out for wetland ecosystem and the results shown that the different wetland plants have similar spectral curve which they still possible to be distinguished in some visible and NIR hyperspectral data. Many applications with the hyperspectral data were carried out for the mineral exploration and the snow studies in the Himalayan region. These studies showed the capability of hyperspectral data for identifying and quantifying minerals and rocks as well as mapping the indicators for mineral exploration and for studying the effect of contamination and grain size variability on snow. These studies also derived the optimum hyperspectral band for these studies. Now we will discuss some of the application in the hyperspectral remote sensing. The very first is agriculture application. Agriculture forms important field for hyperspectral studies owing the diversity in the crop growing condition and management practices. These complexities get compounded to variety of factors such as soil, water management and crop varieties etc. In the field of the crop science, major works carried out are pulse crop discrimination, crop stage discrimination and analysis of angular effect, crop biophysical parameter, retrieval, T crop discrimination studies and crop residue studies. These studies identified important narrow bands required for pulse crop discrimination, important view angles and hyperspectral indices for crop stage discrimination identified the hyperspectral indices for the leaf area index and plant nitrogen estimation. Optimum band for T crop identification, optimum band as well as the important indices for the crop residue study. For soil science, hyperspectral data were used for soil fertility parameter retrieval and mapping, soil variability mapping and fertility zonation estimation of soil parameter like bulk density, EC nitrogen, phosphorus, etc. Second is the snow and glacier application. Reflectance characteristic in the form of spectral library, hyperspectral analysis, con uh, continuum depth, asymmetry, first derivative, peak shift, image processing tools and statistical method along with the better availability of the temporal satellite based hyperspectral data can address the hydrological and the climatological explanation applications like contamination grain sites etc. For better understanding of climate in the snow covered areas of the Himalayan region, analysis of field and Hyperion data have shown the hyperspectral remote sensing plays a crucial role to understand the effect of the contamination and grain size variation on the snow for wavelength ranging from 350 to 2500 nanometers. High side data has limited spectral coverage up to 350 to 960 nanometer which restricts the utility in a snow application. High side temporal data may provide information on different snow types uh, due to metamorphism process. The difficulty which can be seen using high side data will be coarser resolution which imposes a restriction over and member uh, selection. It's no cloud discrimination as the data available only in the visible NIR regions and saturation over snow surface. At present, the limitation of the hyperspectral imaging data over the Himalayan terrain along with the complete spectral coverage 
impose a constraint for the various snow and glacier application. Hyperspectral data with the improved spatial and spectral resolution will provide better insight for the retrieval and of snow physical properties, albedo, fractional, snow cover, climate radiative forcing and many more. The third application lies in the area of environmental application. Hyperspectral remote sensing can be used to study the state of our environment and track changes that occur over the time. This technology has been particularly successful in monitoring water bodies to all sizes from the ponds to ocean and breaks to rivers. We will further classify it to classifying lake water quality. The main advantage of using the remote sensing instead of the traditional lake monitoring method based on the water sample collection to its good spatial and temporal coverage. Monitoring can be carried out several times per year. A lake too small or inaccessible to be included in the traditional sampling can be also monitored. In 2002, Kaponin the researcher classified the water quality using the parameters such as Sachi depth, turbidity and the chlorine A. They obtained the class limits from two operational classification standards of a combination of them was the most suitable when remote sensing data is used because the classification was possible even without concurrent ground truth data. They discovered that the operational classification with the remote sensing data is possible. Their classification accuracy ranged from 76% to the 90%. The airborne water quality classification system was able to classify the target lakes and good accuracy despite different measurement configuration and lake types. This indicates that the remote sensing is a useful tool for water quality classification. However, airborne remote sensing is quite expensive and its use to be is limited to the operational monitoring of the large areas. The fourth application lies in flood detection and monitoring. Flood detection and monitoring are constrained by the inability to obtain timely information of water condition from the ground measurements and airborne observation at sufficient temporal and spatial resolution. Satellite remote sensing allows for timely investigation of areas of large regional extent and provides frequent imaging of the region of interest. Until recently, near time flood detection was not possible but with a sensor such as Hyperion onboard EO-1 satellite, this has been vastly improved. According to research conducted by the Philippe, uh, it stated that the spacecraft technology reduced the time, of, uh, time to detect and react to flood events to a few hours. Advances in the remote sensing have resulted in the investigation of early warning system with a potential global application. Most recent studies from the NASA and the US Ge uh, Geological Survey are utilizing the satellite observation of rainfall river and the surface topography into early warning systems. Remote sensing estimates the hydraulic characteristic which are then applied in routing modules to generate a flood wave in a synthetic river channel. Optimizing methods are used to minimize uh, discrepancies between simulation and observation of flood extent fields to estimate the river discharge. Now we will discuss about the hyperspectral application in the wetland mapping. Wetland mapping has gained increased recognition for the ability to improve quality of the ecosystems. Sustainable management of any ecosystem requires, among other information, a thorough understanding of vegetation species distribution. Hyperspectral imagery has been used to remotely delineate wetland areas and classify hydrophytic vegetation characteristic of these ecosystems. Research undertaken by Smith and Skidmore promoted the use of high spatial and spectral resolution data for improved mapping of a salt marsh vegetation of similar structure. The hyperspectral analysis identified key regions of the electromagnetic spectrum which provided detailed information for discriminating between the identifying different wetland species. Performed a similar study based on coastland wetland plant communities which are spatially complex and heterogeneous. This study also uh, emphasized uh, the importance of hyperspectral imagery for identifying and differentiating vegetation spectral properties from a narrow spectral band focusing on a visible and near infrared regions. 
The sixth application of the hyperspectral remote sensing lies in the area of forest ecosystem forest cover, more than one-fifth of the one-fifth of ge geological area of the country is constituted in the large part in the natural resources. Additionally, forest serves as the major regulator of the Earth's environment. Remote sensing based related to optical remote sensing are in the matured state. In order to enhance the application of the remote sensing data for forestry, hyperspectral sensing can be used for discriminating the species level and community level using the potential of the narrowband data. A primary advantage of hyperspectral remote sensing is its ability to provide measurements of forest chemistry, major elements of chemistry area, chlorophyll A, B, leaf water, cellulose, pigments, lignin canopy. Chemistry can be used to estimate new and old foliage, det detect damage, identity, identify trees and uh, under stress chemical distribution in the forest. This property will enable the forest researchers in application related to forest health, stress detection of diseases and assessment of nitrogen and heavy elements. Biomass burning is another area where hyperspectral remote sensing will be of immense use. Hyperspectral uh, remote sensor would be able to provide such pixel burnt scar to model the fire risk potential. Uh, the dry or the semi current carbon in, uh, indices described to provide an estimation of the amount of the carbon in a dry state of a lignin and cellulose can be used to know the state of the forest lignin is the carbon based molecule used by the plant. For a structural component, cellulose is primarily used in the construction of the cell walls in the plant tissues. Dry carbon molecules are present in a large amount in a woody material and uh, descendants dead or dormant vegetation. These materials are highly inflammable when dry. The hyperspectral data also provides scope for research related to pre-processing atmosphere correction, reducing redundancy classification uh, techniques, parameter and retrieve algorithm and modeling. Hope you have enjoyed the lecture. Thank you.